Hello friends, in this video we will be going through hydraulic control system. We have already studied regarding the pneumatic systems, we will be dealing with hydraulic systems here. So let's start with the hydraulic control systems, okay. So let's start with the introduction. The controlled movement of parts or controlled application of force is a common requirement in industries. These operations are performed mainly by using electrical machines or diesel or petrol or steam engines as a prime mover. The enclosed fluids like liquids and gases can also be used as prime movers to provide controlled motion and force to the objects or substances. The specially designed enclosed fluid systems can provide both linear as well as rotary motion. This kind of enclosed fluid based systems using pressurized incompressible liquids as transmission media are called as hydraulic systems. So working principle of a hydraulic system. The hydraulic system works on the principle of Pascal's law. The Pascal's law states that the pressure in an enclosed fluid is uniform in all the directions. So this diagram explains regarding the uh, pressure, we know pressure is force upon area. So the force F1 applied on area A1 is equal to force F2 applied on area A2. That is uh, I want to say uh, here pressure on the both pistons will be same that is F1. 1 divided by a1 that is p1 will be equal to p2 which is f2 divided by a2 and from this formula we can get f2 a1 is equal to f1 a2 or f2 is equal to f1 into a2 by a1. So by using these formulae we can uh, go for the hydraulic systems okay different components of hydraulic systems and uh, the major component of hydraulic system are prime mover then pump control valves then actuators that is hydraulic motors or pistons piping system and obviously fluid or working fluid in the hydraulic or pneumatic system here in hydraulic system it is a incompressible liquid then the supporting components or filters strainers then storage tanks heat exchangers pressure gauges sensors protective devices control devices and accumulators these are few supporting components which we need in a hydraulic system okay the photos shown here are representing filters and pressure gauges now let's go through the schematic diagram of a hydraulic system so here what we are having is we are having a fluid tank inside which the fluid is filled Okay, so some liquid, incompressible liquid oil will be filled, then it will be, uh, sorry, it will be taken out or other uh, a hydraulic pump uh, which is sucking the oil or which will be delivering the oil to the other parts of the component will take the oil from the suction line through a filter, then uh, it will be going through a pressure regulator okay so if the uh, there will be some excess pressure then needed the bypass will be uh, sent to the tank again then uh, the liquid or the fluid goes to the control wall and from that control wall it will uh, it is also a direction control wall so it will be uh, the fluid will be passed either on the a side or the b side of the uh, this uh, cylinder uh, and accordingly the piston will move in either upward or downward direction uh, which will be again having a weight which is to be displaced okay so this direction control wall will decide the direction of the uh, movement of the piston suppose if the fluid flows towards the side a then the upper part of the piston of the cylinder will start filling with the fluid and the lower part the fluid present in the lower part will be uh, again moved out to the pipe B 
and through control wall it will be going to fluid tank and thus the piston will be moving in downward direction in a other case if the control wall is allowed to uh, pass the fluid from hydraulic pump to the b side then it will come at the b side that is the bottom side of the cylinder and it will start pushing the piston in the upward direction at the same time the uh, fluid which is present at the up, uh, upper side of the piston will be uh, taken back through this uh, a pipe and it will be moved to the uh, fluid tank likewise this system works uh, through uh, hydraulic uh, again hydraulic pump is uh, working with the connection with the some prime or like electric motor and thus we can achieve here uh, whatever the needed part of, of the displacement so here linear displacement is shown in this schematic diagram so let's go through those different parts one by one and the first part is the prime mover right so prime mover is a device which develops a mechanical power this power in a hydraulic system is basically used to drive the pump as i said earlier uh, it will drive the pump the prime mover includes ic engines turbines etc okay so here we are having a schematic representation where the prime mover is shown which is connected to hydraulic pump and there are uh, the fluid lines which are running this hydraulic motor so the rotary motion of prime mover is utilized for uh, pumping action of the fluid and again that fluid pressurized fluid is, is used for the uh, rotating some other body which is a hydraulic motor okay so this is regarding the prime mover then hydraulic pumps pump is a device which converts mechanical energy to fluid energy the hydraulic pump takes hydraulic fluid mostly some oil from the storage tank and delivers it to the rest of the hydraulic circuit the hydraulic pumps are characterized by its flow rate capacity power consumption drive speed pressure delivered at the outlet and efficiency of the pump these are few uh, characteristics based on which uh, pumps can be either selected or used okay so photos represent uh, hydraulic pumps here uh, types of hydraulic pumps there are basically two categories non positive displacement pumps and positive displacement pumps so non positive displacement pumps are known as hydrodynamic pumps fluid is pressurized by the rotation of the propeller and the fluid pressure is proportional to the rotor speed used for low pressure and high volume flow applications like uh, example is centrifugal pump then positive displacement pumps these pumps deliver a constant volume of a fluid in a cycle used in most of the industrial fluid power applications the output fluid flow is constant and is independent of system pressure uh, different examples are vane pump piston pump gear pump etc okay these are pictorial presentation of different types of hydraulic gear pumps first is external gear pump then next internal gear pump the third one is g rotor pump and the fourth one is lobe pump so these are different types of pumps which are used for pumping the fluid in hydraulic system again hydraulic vane pumps like positive displacement type hydraulic piston pumps okay so reciprocating action and rotating action simultaneously will give us the pressurized fluid here okay then the next part that is control valves the control of the mechanical outputs that is motion and force is one of the most important functions in hydraulic system the proper selection of control ensures the desired output and safe function of the system in order to control the hydraulic outputs different types of control valves are required there are basically three types of valves employed in hydraulic system first is direction control valve then flow control valve and last is pressure control valves so we will go through these valves direction control valve direction control valves provide the direction to the fluid and allow the flow in a particular direction 
these balls are used to control the start stop and change in direction of the fluid flow they can be classified in following manner according to type of construction we can bifurcate them in puppet walls and spool walls then based on number of ports and switching positions uh, three way two position four way three position four way two position these are few uh, of many in this category then the last one that is method of change over from one position to the next non throttling type and throttling type so these are different types okay uh, one diagram is shown here which is a three way wall okay so it has a spool that is spool wall and uh, there are three ports so three way wall means there are actually uh, three ports are available okay and two positions will be there so accordingly this wall will operate the next uh, different types the directional control walls are generally specified using the number of ports and the number of switching positions it can be represented in general form as n subscript p slash n subscript s where n subscript p is the number of ports connected to the direction control wall and n subscript s the number of switching positions okay based on the switching positions okay basically uh, first one shown here is three way two position dcv that is direction control wall you can see here three way means there are three ports the port number one is on the upper side port number two and port number three are on the lower side uh, in both the squares here also port one two and three okay and positions two that is this is the one position and this is another position so it has three ways and two positions that is three ports and two positions uh, uh, either this can be connected to the circuits or this can be connected that is the case okay so either these two ports are connected in one time or this and this port like here so this is three way two position in uh, same manner four way two positions direction control all that is it has one two three four total four ports and this is one position this is the another position so the fluid can flow in this manner or it can flow in this manner okay uh, for double acting cylinder this kind of uh, flow direction control is needed okay mm, we will go through that later in later part then four way three positions direction control wall. again there are three different position this is one position this is second position this is third position okay so here again uh, graphical uh, or uh, cross sectional view of four way three position dcv is shown okay so there are total four ports port a b p and t t is actually shown two times here uh, for better understanding so four ports and three positions okay based on the location of these two discs uh, these three positions can be achieved in this four way three position wall okay so accordingly uh, this uh, linear motion of the spool can be achieved so it will be from right to left or left to right or it can be stopped at the center so this accordingly these three positions the next is flow control valves again uh, this is another type of control valve a flow control valve can regulate the flow or pressure of the fluid the fluid flow is controlled by varying area of the wall opening through which fluid passes so different walls are shown here uh, globe wall butterfly wall and plug wall uh, okay and the we know butterfly wall as we are going to change the position of this handle the opening of this wall will be either maximized or minimized accordingly flow of the fluid passing through the pipe will be controlled then again here in the same manner we have to rotate this stem by using this hand hand wheel and accordingly uh, the plug will move in upward or downward direction and it will open or close this small opening 
present in the wall body and accordingly the fluid can be uh, passed with the different flow rates. Same is the case with this plug valve. So again we have to uh, adjust this uh, flow adjustment screw accordingly this plug will move in upward or downward direction and it will make the way for passing of the fluid. The last one is pressure control valves. The pressure control valves are used to protect the hydraulic components from excessive pressure. It is normally a closed type and it opens when the pressure exceeds a specified maximum value by diverting pump flow back to the tank. Pressure control valves are the functional part of the system. Again here is the cross section of a valve is shown. Okay, Pressure adjustment screw is there, then spring is present there, uh, then the control chamber is available and here it is a poppet and again plug is connected to it and uh, this is uh, the pump connection is connected here and this is connected to the tank okay and again this is filled with the uh, pressurized fluid and this is the drain okay for normal operation obviously there will not be any flow as it is closed if the fluid pressure exceeds this uh, spring pre uh, force uh, which is again adjusted according to the required pressure by using this pressure adjustment screw then what happens as the pressure exceeds this spring force uh, the plug moves in upward direction and this passage is get opened for the flow of fluid and which is again diverted to the tank okay so this will release the pressure so we can control the pressure higher pressure is uh, released here likewise this pressure control valve acts. Uh, next component is hydraulic actuators. Hydraulic actuators employ hydraulic pressure to drive an output member. These are used where high speed and large forces are required. The fluid is used in hydraulic actuator is highly incompressible. They convert fluid power into mechanical power. Depending on motion, they can be classified as linear actuators, that is linear motion as output, either cylinder or piston is used, and rotary actuator rotary motion as an output motors are used okay then hydraulic cylinders cylinders are linear actuators that is they produce straight line motion or force cylinders are classified in again two types single acting cylinder and double acting cylinder single acting cylinders have only one fluid chamber and exerts force in only one direction the double acting cylinder is again operated by hydraulic fluid in both the direction and is capable of a power stroke either way. Uh, we can see here this is a single acting cylinder. Uh, it has a single connection of a hydraulic pipe as we are going to supply uh, the hydraulic fluid through this uh, valve to the single acting cylinder. What happens is the piston is forced against this spring pores and this piston rod moves in the out of outward direction that is it gets extended okay and when we don't want or rather we uh, want reverse directional action then what happens only the oil which is present in this part of the cylinder is removed by using direction control wall and because of the spring pores the piston comes to its original position. Okay, so this is a single acting cylinder. In double acting cylinder what happens on both the ends of the cylinder the fluid pipes are connected and according to the fluid supplied on the either side of this piston uh, the movement of this piston and piston rod is controlled. So when we are going to supply fluid in this side of the cylinder it will exert pressure on the piston and piston will move in positive x direction in this figure and if the fluid is provided in this side of the cylinder then it will exert the pressure on the cylinder and uh, sorry piston and the piston will move in negative x direction okay accordingly we need to choose a direction control wall okay so major times here it is a 4 by 2 or 4 by 3 wall is used here we can use 3 by 2 wall 
okay. The next hydraulic motor that is motors work exactly reverse as of the pumps. So, pumps are used to pump fluid from for uh, from lower pressure to higher pressure. Uh, then again, exactly opposite the working of the motor by using the fluid pressure, we are going to rotate the components in the motor. In motors, fluid is forced into the motor from the pump outlet at high pressure and it is converted to rotary mechanical energy. This fluid pressure creates the motion of the motor shaft. Though any pump can be used as a motor, the commonly used hydraulic motors are again vane motors, gear motors and piston motors which are positive displacement types. Last, uh, next is the hydraulic fluid. Hydraulic fluid must be essentially non-compressible to be able to transmit power instantaneously from one part of the system to another part. At the same time, it should lubricate the moving part parts to reduce friction loss and cool the component so that the heat, heat generated does not lead to fire hazards. The most common liquid used in hydraulic systems is petroleum oil because it is only very slightly compressible. Properties of hydraulic fluids, non-compressible, low volatility, corrosion control, fire resistance, low toxicity and good lubricator. These are the different properties which must be possessed by a hydraulic fluid or uh, major times we are going to use uh, as it is said petroleum oils because of these better properties. The next is filters. Okay, The hydraulic fluid is kept clean in the system with the help of filters and strainers. It removes minute particles from the fluid which can cause blocking of the orifices of a servo walls or cause jamming of the spools in the walls. Types of hydraulic filters, there are different types of filters are used. One is suction filter. The suction filter provides protection to the hydraulic pump from particles larger than 10 microns. So, this filter is fitted at the suction side of the hydraulic pump. So, whatever the oil coming to the pump will be filtered, uh, it will uh, come from the tank to the filter, it will, it will be filtered and then uh, sent to the pump. Then pressure side filter located down, downstream from the hydraulic pump. These filters are designed to clean the fluid as it exits the pump to protect more sensitive system components such as control walls and actuators from contaminants generated from the pump. Okay. So, uh, downstream the pump there will be another filter which is pressure side filter which will again clean the oil from minute particles so that the walls and actuators can be saved from damage. The next type is return side filter. Again, it is located between the control wall and the fluid reservoir. These filters are designed to capture wear debris from the hydraulic system working components before returning the fluid back to the reservoir. It is shown in the diagram. So, suction side filter is shown, then pressure side is filter is shown and again return side filter is also shown in the diagram. Again, the last one that is offline filter that is also shown. Offline filter is these filters are used independent from the hydraulic system to clean hydraulic fluid before it enters the hydraulic system itself. Okay. So, before going to the reservoir, the fluid is cleaned. Okay. So, all the four types of filters are shown in the diagram or diagrammatic representation. The next component is accumulator. Unlike the gases, the fluids used in the hydraulic systems cannot be compressed and stored to cater the sudden demands of high flow rates that cannot be supplied by a pump. An accumulator is a hydraulic system provides a means of storing these incompressible fluids under pressure created either by spring or by compressed gas. Any tendency for pressure to drop at the inlet cause the spring or gas force to fluid back out supplying the demand of the flow rates. So, uh, two different types of accumulators are shown in this diagram, bladder type accumulator and piston type accumulator. So, again these are having a half section filled with the pressurized gas and half section with the fluid 
and those can be used as a reservoirs when needed an extra pressure fluid applications of hydraulic systems different applications are there uh, we'll go through few industrial applications plastic processing machines steel making and primary metal extraction applications automated production lines machine tool industries paper industries loaders crushers textile machineries research and development equipment and robotic systems etc then mobile hydraulics tractors irrigation systems earth moving equipments uh, basically earth moving equipments we have gone through these like uh, we know different earth moving equipments basically those are used by uh, those are operated by using hydraulic systems only metal handling equipments commercial vehicles tunnel boring equipments rail equipments building and construction machinery and drilling rigs lots and lots of machines are there automobiles definitely uh, hydraulic systems are used in automobiles it is used in the systems like brakes shock absorbers steering system uh, windshield lift and cleaning etc right we know uh, nowadays in automobile there are many hydraulic systems are available hydraulic uh, hydraulic braking is there hydraulic uh, window opening is there hydraulic steering is also there so lots of things lots of things are there uh, marine applications it is mostly covers ocean going vessels fishing boats and naval equipments then aerospace equipment uh, there are equipments and systems used for uh, radar control uh, then landing gear brakes flight control and transmission etc which are used in aeroplanes or rockets or spaceships okay so this was regarding the hydraulic systems i hope you have get, uh, got the idea regarding what is the hydraulic system what are the different components of hydraulic system and how this system works thank you